Hello, everyone. All right, we're all here. We can start now. Oh, hold on. Let me hit play. Hold on. You can go. All right, I got to hit the thing here. All right. I'd like to call this meeting to order and state that this meeting is being held in compliance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. It was properly noticed and has been posted and certified by the clerk. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Ms. Roberts. Here. Mr. Schindler. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Young. Here. Mayor Francis. Here. Please join me in a moment of silence in respect of uh, Kirk. Thank you. Please join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. Thank you. Now, when we today we're going to start the meeting, Ron. Uh, I don't have proclamation, but I, I would like a presentation by a representative from Planet Network. Is he on board? Ron, you're muted. Yeah, Ron, that's uh, Rob. You have to unmute yeah, Robert, Boyle. Robert Boyle. Yeah. yeah, Robert Boyle, he's on. Yep. Robert, would you please do your presentation? Looks like he's muted, Ron. No, I've got him off. I've got him off. His microphone might not be working. Yeah, Robert, we can't hear you. Oh, I don't know where he's going now. I think he's getting off and then logging back on. Okay. While we're waiting, uh, Mike, do you want it? Are there any proclamations? No. But I wanted everybody to hear this uh, presentation by Planet Network. We have a resolution that's going to allow them to run the fiber optics on the poles in town. Right. Which I believe is good for the town. He's trying to come back on now. Okay. So rather than have the, just the uh, resolution, and I thought I would invite him so everyone could understand what it's about. Oh, can you guys hear me now? Now he's back. Sorry about that. My, uh, I, my computer was selected a different microphone than the one that was actually connected. Sorry uh -huh. about that. So anyway, um, thank you for having me. Um, our company is Planet Networks. We have been providing internet services for 25 years. Um, we started up as a dial-up uh, company a long time ago, and um, we kind of abandoned the um, consumer internet market um, in the early 2000s when the cable company and the phone company kind of got into it and made it so independent internet service providers really couldn't um, you know, access uh, the lines at the same prices that they, they could, so it was really uncompetitive. And we focus on our cloud services businesses, uh, I'm part of the business. And um, in when the ARRA passed, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act passed a few years ago, um, Congress basically reaffirmed and said, hey, we wanted competition in broadband, we really meant it, and now we're gonna make some changes that make it happen. So with some of those changes that happened, some of the changes that happened at the FCC, after that um, has made it a lot easier for us to get onto the telephone poles. And um, as a result, um, we are able to build our own fiber network now and serve businesses and consumers. And so we, um, are, we are a phone company in the state of New Jersey, regulated by the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities. And part of that um, is that whenever we use any municipal rights of way, um, the New Jersey law basically says that we have to ask permission and that the town has to grant it 
but it basically creates a two-way conversation so that you know who's building in your town and who's putting things in the right of way and how to contact us and we know who to contact and what your procedures are for uh, for building in the right of way so and we're, what we're doing is we're building out um, primarily to higher density areas initially and then we'll eventually want to serve everybody um, but typically we start with um, you know the higher density lake areas um, business corridors places where there's higher um, density per mile of, of um, businesses and homes and then we will branch out from there um, and then we kind of start typically from wherever you're contiguous wherever it's contiguous with our network and then we build from where we already have network to the closest place in in your town and then we our township then we go from there um, proceeding you know it's it's always contiguous because we have to have a connection back to our network to be able to provide services and we provide residential and consumer uh, residential consumer services as well as business services does anyone have any questions or Robert maybe you could uh, let the council know um, the types of plans that will eventually be uh, available to consumers and the speeds I think that's interesting for business sure. and consumers sure so our slowest speed which we don't really recommend that we don't you know most people don't take, but it's, our, it's you know, kind of the most affordable, is um, 175 by 175. And that's, uh, it's the same speed up and down. It's 175 megabits up and down. And you actually get that, whether you're doing it at two in the afternoon or eight o'clock at night or three in the morning, you actually get 175 up and down. We actually over provision, it's actually provisioned to 200 by 200, but we sell it as 175 by 175. And um, that speed is 64.95 a month. Um, and then we have a couple other tiers, so 300 by 300, a 500 by 500, and a 1,000 by 1,000. Um, so our gigabit service, which is 1,000 up and 1,000 down, is $109.95 a month. So for $110 a month, you get gigabit up and down. And then we also have a, uh, a 10 gig service now, which is a bit more expensive. It's $499 a month, but that's 10,000 up and 10,000 down. So I don't know what you guys are getting now, but typically even with the fastest cable connection, your upload speed is limited to typically around 20 or 30 or maybe 40 megabits per second. And so, um, you know, our speeds are hundreds of times faster than that. So. And everything's fiber all the way to the house. So I'm sorry, go ahead. No, Robert, um, I just had a question regarding you were saying the build out and everything. Um, obviously, or not obviously, is your goal to fiber optic the whole town? Yeah, so we don't do anything except for fiber optics. So um, everywhere we build, we build fiber and we build fiber to the, to the building, to the house, to the business, whatever. So, um, and for us, um, you know, we're not a huge company. We're not, um, you know, we don't have billions of dollars in venture capital or you know, money from you know, being in the phone business for a hundred years. Um, so everything we do has to be profitable because we're, we, we use our own internal growth um, capital to, to build our network. So we typically, like I said, we'll do high density areas first uh, because that makes the most sense, but we want to reach other areas. So we won't say, oh, we're not going down that street because it's not profitable. If we pass it, we'll, we'll go down the street if we have customers there who want our service. But it, our speed of, of growth and deployment is really dependent on how quickly um, we get um, people to subscribe. So in most areas where we provide service and, and other areas of Sussex County, um, it's a little bit different than where you guys are. You have, um, you guys have Optimum, right? As your cable company. Yes, so we do. Optimum is a pretty decent company. They provide pretty good service and, and, you know, reason why customer service, you know, we have, I use Optimum in my house. And um, so I'm, I'm very familiar with the kind of the reliability of the service and, and the pricing and everything. I think they, $126 a month and I have 400 megs down and I think I have 40 up, but I would say that there's at least 15 to 20 minutes a day that I can't use the internet just because it doesn't work, which is very frustrating. Um, but um, so I'm, I'm familiar with it and that they're of all the companies out there, they're, they're pretty decent um, compared to some of them um, in other areas where we provide services um, like Sussex County, for example, um, wherever we build service, we get almost hundred percent of the customers. Um, because the, the options are more limited than they are where you guys are. Um, 
but um, hopefully we get similar take rates. So if we get close to 100% of houses passed, um, we'll be able to build pretty quickly. If we build down the street and we get, you know, 10%, 20% of them, it's going to take a long time for us to continue building because the return on investment just isn't there. Um, but I, that's, I don't expect that. I think we'll get at least 50%. Um, everywhere we build, we've, we've gotten a minimum of that and typically closer to 100%. So if, if that happens pretty quickly, then we expect that we'll build out as quickly as we can. I have a question. So this would be fiber optics just for internet service. Well, we also provide phone services and we also, um, we recommend, uh, we have our own TV service that we're in the process of working on, but um, it's really for people who don't want to learn to do something different or new. Um, what we typically recommend is people buy a Roku or an Apple TV or Google Chromecast or whatever, and use something like YouTube TV. You can stream on three different TVs. Um, your one-time cost for Chromecast for an HD one is about $49 or Roku is $49 to $69, $89, whatever. Um, you buy it, you own it, and you can listen, you can watch net, Netflix and you can watch and pretty much anything you want. There are a lot of streaming services out there. YouTube TV lets you watch on three TVs at the same time for $49.95 a month. Um, it has unlimited NVR. It's a great option. Um, I don't know that our option is going to be as competitive as that is. That's probably a better deal. Um, however, our TV option will be more like traditional cable, which a certain segment of the population is looking for a, a drop-in exact replacement. So you don't want to have to learn how to use something new. You want to be able to just flip on the channel and leave it on all day long and, and not have it say, are you still watching? And then you have to say yes. Um, so for, for people who want that, we will offer something. Um, our phone service is $10 a month. We don't do any weird gimmicky things where you have to take our phone service to get a $20 discount in order to say that we have more phone subscribers. We don't really care whether you use our phone service or not. Very few people do, but it's reliable. It's unlimited nationwide calling. And I think we include Mexico, we include Canada, we include I think the UK, Australia, New Zealand, pretty much any English speaking country is unlimited calling too. So, um, so this, but, this would be a good plan for somebody who just has internet based TV yeah. uh, and is not really interested in the, you know, conventional <laughs> cable television setup. Yeah, and that's more and more people. I mean, at this point, more than 50% yeah. of the population have cut the cord. Yes. And the cable companies know that their days are limited as a, as a traditional cable offering. Um, it's it, More and more people are realizing that they can save a lot of money and have a lot more choices. And typically the quality is much better too with streaming television because it's minimum HD on everything. Right. And yeah. a lot of 4K content, especially on Netflix and Amazon Prime and and plus, a lot of people have Amazon Prime anyway for shipping, and you get a massive number of program uh, for free. And Netflix is what twelve dollars a month or something, and that serves the needs for most people. And they're paying for an internet connection anyway. So, um, and we're happy to you know explain this to people and, and have uh, take somebody at town hall explaining kind of how how to do this. Just as a public service kind of thing. If it doesn't really have anything to do with us. We don't make anything on on if you sign up with YouTube TV or Netflix or whatever. It's just a it's just a different way of consuming um, that media content and uh, saving money in the process. Yeah, because I, I think that uh, comparatively speaking, the speed a thousand by a thousand you were saying is one hundred and nine dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and our network is very reliable. We build everything so that it's fed from multiple points, and um, we've been a network operator for twenty six years. And the other nice thing is with our network everything goes direct. So if you're going to Google, it goes, leaves our network and goes to Google. If you're going to something on Amazon, it leaves our network and goes to Amazon. You're streaming from Netflix, we connect directly to Netflix. So you're not going across the internet, you're not um, going through a bunch of different other hops. And if there's a problem with something, we can fix it very quickly. So but it's very rare that we have issues because fiber is just so much more reliable. Unless there's a pole that's down and something's actually cut, it just works, which is a a nice thing for the customer and for us. So this is a way for us to get fiber optics in Hopatcon, which we've never had before. Yeah. So, and, and it's going to take us a while to deploy. I mean, like I said, we're, we're capital, you know, constrained um, and, you know, but we're interested in deploying everywhere we can. We have a lot of need. Uh, there's a lot of need out there. A lot of people have, uh, we have a survey at getplanetfiber.com. And a lot of people have uh, from Hopatcon have filled out the survey and said, Hey, we want service. Um, I also spoke to um, 
to your, um, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but um, Freeholder from, um, from back on, and she said that uh, she really likes it, and she hears that frequently from her people in the town that they would like another option and they'd like ha to have um, more competition, so. Sylvia, Sylvia Petrillo, maybe? I think. Petrillo. Yeah, I remember right correctly. Okay. It took me a second to remember her name. Sorry. Any other questions at all? Or? So I believe it was appropriate to have him make the presentation so we could understand exactly what our uh, resolution can address. Yeah, so just, just to kind of clarify that. So most of what we do, and this is, the, I'm answering a question nobody's asked, but a lot of people do ask this. We're not planning to replace the polls. We're not planning on putting in new polls for the most part. Um, we go on the existing polls. So the polls are either owned by the power company, JCPNL, or they're owned by Verizon. And you guys don't have any century link in your town. I think everything's Verizon in, in the back on, right? Yeah. So, um, so they own the polls and they have a joint use agreement. So sometimes you'll see just because there's power on the poll doesn't mean the power company owns it. Just because the, there isn't telephone on it doesn't mean that the power com uh, that the, uh, you know, if it's just for a telephone poll and Verizon's on it, doesn't necessarily mean Verizon owns it. Um, but they have a joint use agreement. They share the polls. And at the end of the year, they do an accounting and they say, use this many of our polls. We use this many of your polls. And one of them cuts a check to the other one. We license every poll that we're on. So we have to take pictures of the poll. We have to do a survey, figure out where we're going to attach. And then we work with the poll owner to get a, um, a what's called a permit to go onto that poll. So we will do some underground work. Um, if it's an underground neighborhood, we'll feed it via the nearest pole, and then we'll have to do work. We'll work with the Department of Public, you know, with your, your water and sewer departments. We'll work with other utilities. We have to do locates. And we're typically, it, we're delayed in, in installing the underground neighborhoods because the cost is about four to five times the cost of doing it aerially. So um, those will be the last areas to get service, unfortunately. Um, it's just a economics um, thing, but when when we go on existing polls, typically we don't need to place any new polls. We just you know, run along the existing ones, and as long as there's room on the poll, um, it's pretty straightforward. Sometimes we have to replace a poll if there isn't enough room for us to attach. Um, that's an expensive process, but we work with the poll owner, and we have to pay that cost if we want to attach to it. Um, sometimes, if there isn't something across the street and it makes sense, we may approach the town, and this is where we would get the town engineer typically involved, and we would ask permission to place a pole in the right of way. And if, it, if we have to replace two or three poles in a row, and that may be $10,000 per pole, um, basically our service would end at that point, but we can drop three poles for $400, $500 each for $1,500, we can keep going down the road, um, then we'll do that. And, um, but that's something where we have to ask the town for permission in those cases. Um, but most of the time, if we're, most of the time, most of our installations, we're not installing any new poles. We're not digging up the streets. We're not, um, you know, digging trenches or anything. We're just running on the existing telephone poles. And this will come at no cost to the residents of the town. Other than if they sign up for service. Well, well yeah, of course. Right, right, right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Robert, what's your time frame? Uh, assuming everything goes forward. So we are, um, right now we're in Byram and we're building out to um, Lake Lackawanna and we think we're going to probably go continue past Lake Lackawanna and go um, around it and basically go into Pakong that way. We also have fiber in Sparta and we're working with Jefferson. So we'll probably come around that way too. So we want to feed it basically both from 206 and from 15. We also have fiber in, um, in Rockaway. So we're probably going to come up from the south that way too. And so we, we're not sure exactly what we're going to build first. And part of that depends on how complicated those other builds are and how, what the cost of those is. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where we're going to feed it from for initially, but we would like to come into town from three different areas and have three separate feeds. And we do have um, a business client, a uh, medical practice that, um, sorry, a medical practice that uh, we need to have service by the beginning of next year. So we will be um, focusing in there and landing. So we're going to be focusing on kind of building to them um, as the initial thing. And then when we build to them, what we want to do is we want to pass every single house that we pass 
and every business we want to provide service to. And then we typically will branch off from those areas. So we'll do a bit a build to a to a large area or to a um, a business that's kind of an anchor tenant, if you will, and then everything that's in the route to them will branch off from there and, and kind of build out and uh, provide services uh, along that path. And then so our, our initial build is probably going to happen sometime in the fall to you know have it completed at least to landing um, by spring. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that was very helpful to us. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Look forward to serving all of you and working with you. Yeah, we're looking forward to having you. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move to committee reports. Don, we'll start with you. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, everything is going well at the community <coughs> center. So we have had, since our last meeting, we've had uh, two days where people could come in and pick up food. Uh, it went very well in that. People are very respectful of the requirements of just four at a time in the center. Um, everyone has had a temp check at the door not one fever. Um, everyone has worn a mask and been able to come in and grab up, you know, a bag of food, things that they need. And we still have beef and chicken and, you know, freezer full of, of food that we're able to give out. We do have a couple of people that are shut in. We're still delivering to them. Um, just because we're slowly reopening, we're not going to leave those folks that are home. We're not going to leave them uh, high and dry. So the, the delivery is still going on to those that need it. But those that can come in are coming in very slowly, very respectfully and responsibly and getting their food and we haven't had any problems. Um, we did decide to just for right now not have foot traffic going on every single day. So the, fo the food pickup days for right now are just every Monday from 10 to 12, goes a little bit past 12, that's fine. Um, but we're not gonna do the foot traffic every single day. Uh, we do have people stopping in and asking questions about resources, whether in the town or at the county. So that's nice that we can give out that information again. And um, when they do come in, Doreen being the, the, uh, you know, the face, the frontline face of the community center, she has her mask on uh, just to make everyone aware of that so they can feel safe and welcome coming in and everyone that comes in again has a mask on uh, we also clean every friday uh, i'd also like to say thank you to alex mclean uh, for all of his uh, drive-through food pickups um, he did get in touch with me last week as he's wrapping that up i did take his overage of food and um but so since he's he's now wrapped that up i, I just want to say um how how great what a great job he did and it was really nice uh to have that backup um we had several backups in town so i just think we're a very fortunate town here in hopacom that we back each other up um and we kind of spread the we spread it around we spread around the um you know the uh the responsibility and the load and and just make sure everyone gets what they need so uh i think that's a we're in a good place right now and i thank you for the opportunity to uh give you an update thank you brad you up just a few things uh first of all regarding the covid uh pandemic <laughs> uh, just uh reason back on has 128 reported cases and we're running about 10 percent of the entire county the county's latest numbers was 1235. Uh, in a sad note, my condolences goes out to Kurt, the family of Curtis Maltz, the operator of the weed harvester that was recently uh, uh, killed in uh, Crescent Cove. And I also mentioned this uh, to put uh, 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 thanks out and appreciation out to the Hopacom Police Department. We have, uh, I believe, up to about five that actually went into the water in the attempt to uh, rescue uh, Mr. Maltz. And, uh, and they also uh, ended up coming down sick from whatever was in the water at that location. So again, I wanna thank them and, and all the other responders, uh, as well as the uh, Jefferson Fire Department uh, both that showed up. 
Um, moving on to the agenda, uh, we have several things on the agenda of note. Uh, there is a resolution uh, from the Finance Committee uh, regarding the white collar contract. Uh, I would appreciate your consideration and support on that. Um, and then we also have uh, five different pieces of property that are either up for sale or vacating. Uh, that's coming from the Real Estate Committee, which recently met. And uh, other than that, I think, oh, the last thing I want to do say is uh, recently, on June the 18th, uh, I want to congratulate uh, our uh, OPACON Seniors of the Year, uh, Lola and John Scala. Uh, unfortunately, John was uh, under the weather uh, during this time frame, so uh, and, uh, a parade was organized with the police department and the fire department, and after a small get-together at the uh, pavilion behind the senior center, we uh, we went past his house and he was able to look out at a rather lengthy parade going by his house. So congratulations to our seniors of the year and that's all, Mike. Thank you. Rich, you're up. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as always, I just want to thank all the EMS, fire, and police officers for their work, you know, being on the front line and dealing with the public during the COVID-19 epidemic pandemic we have. Um, also, uh, riding on Brad's uh, tails, I just want to thank the four officers plus the chief that uh, went in and tried to save the uh, weed harvester driver's uh, Curtis's life, even though we did lose him. Um, I just want to say thank you, and uh, it really just uh, goes to show that our guys are really willing to get in there and uh, help out, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, going on to the uh, COVID-19 Right now, as, as Brad said, we're at 1,235 diagnosed as of June 30th. Um, we have, uh, from uh, the last time I reported, which was uh, June 15th, we've had an increase of 32 uh, reported cases, and um, we have 35 reported uh, cases that have recovered. So uh, the numbers are actually sort of even, but getting better. So please everyone be diligent, still wear your masks when you're out in public, do your social distancing, um, and let's pray that it keeps, uh, keeps going down. Um, also, uh, real estate committee, Brad mentioned this, uh, we have the four properties that are up. The first three, uh, actually we, or two of them we tried to do earlier and we tabled them. Uh, and uh, the last two that we added, Adams Trail and Madison Trail. We're just looking for your support on that. Uh, also, congratulations to the seniors of the year. Uh, they are very deserving of this. And uh, as always, go out and support our local businesses, especially the restaurants. You know, uh, the stuff with uh, the governor pulling the in indoor seating at the last minute. I know a lot of these restaurants went out and got supplies you know, for the buildup of uh, having people sit in, indoors. And, uh, you know, if you can go out and get a burger or, or a meal, even if you're going to be sitting outside or a takeout, just to help everyone out. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. John Young, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I would like to ditto everyone's thanks to all of our first responders, <laughs> police, uh, fire, rescue, first aid, uh, and a special um you know, thanks to the uh, officers of our PD that went in the water trying to save Mr. Mulch, and my condolences go out to that family. Um, as well, my condolences go out to the Castoro family, who Millie Castoro passed away last week. Millie was a longtime previous employee of the uh, of the borough, uh, and a beautiful a beautiful lady. Um, as to Lola and John Scala, I'd like to congratulate them myself and just want to tell everybody, if you go down to the high school football field on the upper right-hand side of the bleachers, you'll see number one fans. And that was dedicated several years ago to John and Lola uh, because they're almost always at football games and wrestling matches. Um, <clears throat> so congratulations to them. From recreation, we have some new events that have been scheduled now. Uh, a lot of things have changed with obviously the recent changes to the world. Uh, we have coming up, we have on Friday, July 17th is a movie night, The Abominable Snowman. Uh, the second movie night will be August 7th 
that's also a Friday. That's the Hedgehogs. <clears throat> we have a concert in, at the gazebo scheduled featuring a portion of, and I'm not exactly sure what portion of the high school band. That's August 1st uh, at the gazebo from 1 to 3.30. There is a second band coming in. The second band hasn't been named yet. And finally, the egg hunt has been rescheduled to August 8th with a rain date of August 9th. And that'll be at Vets Field. I'm not exactly sure of the time. I believe it's 10 o'clock in the morning, I think. And I know we've taken measures to separate age groups and, and uh, minimize contact. Um, from environmental, we had a meeting the other night. Uh, we Previously in the year, we had filed for an ANJAC grant uh, for a pollinator garden. We did not get that. Unfortunately, that went somewhere else. We are looking into some other grants basically geared towards the uh, town beautification. We had some conversation about restarting the Creative Arts Council and we're looking to get some of our uh, environmental commissioners um, interested in that as well as anyone else who is interested. Shade Tree Commission member is still on hold. And I wanna just review a list of canceled events and some of them are actually the dates were passed, but the New Jersey Tree Recovery Free Giveaway was canceled. The poster contest was canceled. Earth Day hike was canceled. National Trails Day hike was canceled. Opacon Day is canceled. And Fall for Our Town was changed to a biannual event. What is still on the agenda, uh, the Lake Opacon, uh, Lake Pacon Foundation Block Party was rescheduled for October 10th, and our commission participates in that. And we still have scheduled Town Shred Day for September 19th um, at the Senior Center from 10 to 1. And we are still planning on doing a rain garden ribbon cutting. We don't have a date on that yet. We also had some conversation about putting a table at the Hopakong Market in regards to in, in invasive plants and other species. Um, open Space had a meeting last week. It was basically our reorg meeting. We had some discussion regarding forest management in the natural area preserve area. And we had discussion about what was a previous ordinance that we tabled funding the uh, playground purchase of playground equipment for Modic Park. And we would like to move forward with that. We'd like to see the, the funding limited to 35,000 or less, obviously. Uh, so I'd like to ask Ron to start the process of, of establishing an ordinance to that effect. Um, and we had some discussion about we need to get working on the borough master plan. Uh, and that's it, Mayor. Thank you, John. Ryan, you're up. <clears throat> okay. Um... The Firewise Committee should be meeting sometime next week. We're working on a schedule for that. Uh, things going on over at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our next meeting is July 10th, and uh, we're also hosting a job fair July 16th. Uh, more details can be found on the Cham Sussex Chamber of Commerce website. Uh, over at the Sussex County MUA, uh, that calendar is changing daily. Everything is being brought, brought back online slowly but surely, as regulations will allow. So please head over to scmua.org for details. That's all I got. Thank you. Jennifer, you're up. All right. Um, there is a superintendent meeting next Wednesday, July 8th at 6 p.m. Um, it is in the high school parking lot, allotting for social distancing and a recommendation to wear masks. I wanted to congratulate all of my PAC 88 um, Scouts, uh, they had crossover yesterday. Uh, we have new tigers, new wolves, new bears, new weevilos, and uh, five new boys working on their arrows of light. So congratulations, PAC 88. I wanted to offer my condolences to the family of Curtis Mulch, um, and a thank you to all the first responders. Um, and I also wanted to reiterate what Brad and Rich said about um, the indoor dining being pushed back. It was supposed to open tomorrow. And um, I, we really need to go out and support our local restaurants, uh, whether that be outdoor dining or ordering in, delivery, whatever you, you know, are comfortable with. But I think we really need to continue to support our local restaurants around here. I know there was a couple of new ones that popped up in the last couple of weeks that have opened 
up. So I think that's really important that we do that. And that is all I have. Thank you. Ron, you're up with the administrative report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I will uh, assume, my, Mayor, that you'll, that you'll give the update on the accident on the lake and what's going on in the future of that. And quite frankly, the, the despicable process is going on by our state right at the moment on that issue. Um, I wanted to update everybody on the recycling center. We're, we're continuing to hand out stickers and um, this as a, a point of uh, data, if you will, Saturday, we had about 23, 24 cars come in that didn't have stickers, half of which were not residents of the borough at all. Wow. And stickers were and were allowed to come in and we did uh, reiterate that they needed to get a sticker. Half, again, of those non-resident people were contractors. They were commercial people that were trying to dump on our facility that were not uh, Hopecon residents. So the process is proving to um, eliminate those additional costs that we could occur by having that extra recycled material to take away. Um, we are working almost on a daily basis uh, with the senior center in regards to having a, a form of a drive-by nutrition distribution or lunch process. Quite frankly, it, it, it's again, a lot of the bait and switch that we're getting out of Trenton right now, just as our restaurants just experienced where our restaurants in, you know, got inventory, hired people, and now they turn it off. Um, we get that almost daily from the human service department out of the state of what the requirements are going to be about having a drive-by nutrition for our seniors at the senior center. So it's a day-to-day -day issue. We are working as hard as we can to do it within the specifications. Just getting our arms around that specification is a moving target these days. Um, River Sticks is going very well. It's progressing uh, well. I don't have an estimated completion time on that as yet. I'm pushing them for that, but it is progressing very well. Um, and again, uh, ha hands off to our chief and the guys that jumped in. Uh, they're all heroes in my mind. And that's all I got. Ron, at this point, could you do the flyover of the solar? Sure. So, yeah, and so I can, I can comment later, but show the flyover now to show everybody the progress on that. Okay. <laughs> And here we go. <laughs> and that shows the establishment towards the dog, uh, our animal shelter and the road leading in and everything up there is, is the installation of the solar and the panel. The panels are, are already, those boxes there are the panels that are getting ready to get installed. That's been a magnificent process to watch. Those guys are busy every day. Those are the ballasts that you're seeing. Those are big concrete blocks. You can start to see the scope of it when you look at that panoramic view. It's, it's slightly less than two megawatts. So what you're looking at is probably 1.7 megawatts or thereabouts. You see the school in the background over the horizon.
this, this is unedited, so we, we're not experts with the drone, but we try to show as best we could what we were doing. And some of these uh, views were taken from about 400 feet up because that's as high as we could go legally. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that, I hope this gives you some scope of, of what's going on. And then boxes, them crates are the, the collectors actually. We did this on Saturday. So uh, the collectors are, they're starting to put them up now. Well, that's about it, Mike. All right, thank you. Well, I just wanted, you know, I'm always talking about this. I just wanted people to see some of the results of, of the labor when I talk about it. There's a little over 400 ballasts, so them square concrete, concrete things, there's probably about 420 of them. Uh, and so since we can't penetrate the, uh, the lining, they just uh, uh, hold everything down. They, they're good for about, I believe, about 120, 150 mile an hour wind. So uh, anyhow, thank you for that, Ron. Mike, and, and please, thanks, Anthony, for providing that film. It's very well done. Yeah, uh, actually, Anthony Bongiovanni did the, uh, did the zone flyover, the uh, drone flyover. So, and, and when we get deeper into it, we'll, uh, we'll do another one to show you the finished product. So hopefully you can keep in mind what you saw now with the skeleton. And then when we're done, it, it'll look very different. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mike, Mike, hey, Michael, hold on one second. I forgot one thing. I'm sorry. It's been a long week. Uh, in your new business, could you bring up the issue again? The governor gave out a permissive uh, authorization today indicating that water and sewer tax and interests can be waived. Um, Again, have, I would like to counsel to weigh in on that one way or the other. Our tax collector is going to need to know which direction we're going to go in. Well, I'll, yes, I'll talk about that, and then I'll have our CFO uh, make some suggestions on how we approach that. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. All right. Now, I'll entertain a motion to open the public comment, an opportunity to give it to the public for commentary. Comments are limited to one comment of no more than five minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Again, guess... Mr. Hopperkamp. Mr. Hopperkamp? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Schindler? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Okay, Ron, take it. All right, I'd ask everyone that would like to make a comment to please hit the reactions button and show me a hand and I'll go in the order that I see them. Thank you. You're muted, Ron. Oh. Gerard, you're on. Who's on? You are. Thank you. First, I would like to uh, thank the mayor and the members of Borough Council for bringing in the alternative service um, for the internet. I've heard many, many complaints about cable vision and, and raising their prices and very little um, could be done about it without the competition. Second, I think the solar field um, is another very, very nice accomplishment. Um, the, only, the only concern that I have is that I know that the mayor and, and council 
um, are often vilified. Um, and you get a lot of bad press as, as a result. Um, I think the solar field is, is a definite positive, and I would like to see um, something in the form of a letter to the editor, a press release, or something like that, so that people have an idea that not um, that the mayor and the council are all are all bad people. Um, I wanted to ask about the the upcoming bond issue. Um, would anybody happen to know the credit rating of the borough? Um, and then I, I wonder if that I wonder if that particular bond issue has been, or, or or if you've considered shopping the issuance of the bond issue uh, through the Morris County Improvement Authority. They have a AAA bond rating. And in many cases, upon request, they will consider um, issues from outside the county. Um, and all I'm asking is, um, is for somebody to inquire. Um, and, and last but not least, I know that there are a lot of people who are concerned about whether or not schools will be open in the fall. And um, my question is do the mayor and members of council have any input, any oversight over that? And that's all that I have. Thank you. Okay, uh, again, a show of hands of anyone that wants to uh, address the council. Uh, Mara Mode, you're on. Hi. Um, first, I'd like to thank the mayor for quickly responding. I referred a um, senior that I couldn't help to him. And then I have a comment. The mayor and council represent the residents of the PACON. And since Councilman Harvey Rosef was recently censured for his remarks on Monday in the Herald, I believe Councilman Ryan Smith's comments made before the meeting officially started, referring to the governor as Das Führer, due to Mr. Smith's requirements to be COVID-19 tested. I found his comment offensive and his comments do not represent me. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Heather Fury, Windsor Avenue. I have three questions. One, there is a res uh, an ordinance for something like $1.2 million, and part of that is a sewer piece that says sewer expansion or sewer extension, $150,000. I was wondering if somebody provide an explanation on that. Uh, the next two questions relate to the Hudson Ave item specifically. One is, um, I'm, I asked last meeting, didn't get an answer and I'm asking this meeting, there was the discussion that there's a guaranteed 50%, given the state of the finances in the state of New Jersey, where is, the, where is it written that there is a guarantee for 50%? And if it's not, what happens if the state backs out after we've already started and committed to this project? The second question is, are there um, lots that are listed on there that are vacant buildable lots that are included on this, on the plans for connection, just as there was with the original project where people had to pay for their allocation? Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Leslie Cole, 109 Francis. Um, I'd like to uh, get a little more information what the process might be about inviting or allowing uh, Planet Network into the town. Um, if they, they, their plans seem like they're working towards our area, uh, will there be uh, 
issues in approving that. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, everyone that responded to the gentleman uh, on the harvester, Mr. Mulch, and, and rescuing him. It was a very tragic situation, um, very upsetting for the town and everyone along with it. Um, and I guess that's it for now. And I wanted to, oh, could somebody go over again the process? Because so I think a lot of people are unclear why we did the um, solar project and what the benefits are for the town. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Bill, you're on. Hey, thank you for your time, guys. Uh, first of all, I live at 223 Hudson. Uh, I want to also commend all the people that were involved. My house actually looks uh, over where uh, the incident took place. I wasn't home at the time, but I was there um, for the cleanup and such. So it was a pretty awful event. Um, I just really wanted to ask, uh, I received the mailing regarding the bond ordinance. Uh, I'm sure you're aware it's very difficult for lay people to understand uh, all the wordage that goes into that. But I've tried to follow the, um, the developments as you guys move forward to put in the sewer line. But I wanted to have verification that I've been in the property just shy of two years. At the time when I moved in, I had the sewer, uh, my septic system replaced. Uh, and I just wanted to be sure that uh, once that uh, sewer line is placed, is it a requirement that everybody has to hook up to that? Or is it still, I think I was at one of the first or second meetings that the town had. Um, is it still an option uh, to join at a later date? Because you can probably understand after spending the money and the time to install a new septic system, uh, then to uh, get that done. So. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, Mayor, I don't see any more hands. Oh, take that back. Uh, Amy Meyer? Yeah, uh, 243 Hudson Ave. Um, I wanted to see um, if there was a sewer start date. A lot of us are um, lakefront and down from um, the road and are going to have to be hiring architects, things like that, in order, um, uh, in order to get these sewer pipes to our homes. And we really just need adequate time to have that all in place. So um, an actual sewer start date would be awesome. That's really all I have. I just need to know when we're going forward, when we're starting. Thank you. Yep, we're good. I got gotcha.
I'm happy to answer that if you want me to. Go ahead. Okay. So um, we have a website that's a survey website that's getplanetfiber.com, G-E-T-P-L-A-N-E-T, fiber, F-I-B-E-R.com. So getplanetfiber.com. If you go there, you can put in your address, and what it does is it saves your address, and we look at where we have the most addresses, where we have the most inquiries, and that's where we build. So if Lake Pakong lights up like a Christmas tree, and we have, you know, every street, everyone has put in their address and says they want service, then we will absolutely move it to the top of the list. So we, we build where there's the highest demand. Right now, we're building out, our goal is to build out all of Lake Mohawk um, by the end of this year and all of Newton by the end of this year. So um, because we have, you know, pretty much every second or third house is, um, is there. And I know that once we have those, the rest of them will have service as well. So we're also building out in Byram and we're also building out in Andover. So um, Lake Apakong is definitely um, a high density area. It's exactly the type of community that we want to build out in and it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so if we have more people who say they want service, then we will definitely prioritize it. Say that website again, please. It's get, G-E-T, planet, like, you know, word planet, fiber.com. Thank, Thank you. you. So everyone can feel free to share that. More comments, Ron? Mike, I don't see any more, sir. Okay, I entertain a motion to. I don't call. see any more, Mayor. Why me? I don't see any more. I entertain a motion. I'll move to bring it back. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopper Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Here. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Okay. Well, um, in answer to one question, our, our bond rating is double A plus, I'm told. Uh, as far as I know, the last conference call with Trenton, the 50% loan forgiveness is still on. They have not retracted that. Um, the solar project. For those of you who don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it, please call me because I could talk about it for a long time. But really, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the difference with our solar project is that most places do a power purchase agreement or a partnership. The borough of Pacon did not. I would not gamble with taxpayers' money. We are leasing the landfill for 25 years for $15,500 a megawatt installed. So it's going to be a little less than two megawatts, so do the math. Uh, aside from that, the, uh, the principals that are investing in this enterprise have taken over management of the landfill. That means that they pay for the analysis. They pay for the reports. And that red tape generally costs us about $15,000 a year. So that's the cost avoidance that we do by having that, that company there. The approximate value of this project is, is approximately $4 million when it's all done. Just, just what you saw on that flyover. It'll look a little bit better when the panels are up. To my knowledge, I don't know if anybody has ever invested that much money in one place in our town at any time. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit of the scope of the project or strategy on the project. There is no risk. We do have approximately a $3 million insurance policy. So if everything goes bad and we're stuck with a, a landfill full of stuff we can't use, we have uh, the money to throw it away, really. Um, and I guess that should answer most of the questions. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the farmer market, so that will go. But uh, Mike, more I have to come a quick question. I have a quick question about the um the uh, Hudson Soar, the 50% uh, the that you said the, uh, the state had pledged to us, do we have some sort of a good faith contract or something in writing? Like where, where, where do we have 
that assurance that they're going to absorb the 50% yeah. for us. We, we, we do have some, some writing, but you know, uh, the only thing sure is taxes and debt, but uh, uh, I've been assured through our conference calls with the, uh, with, with, the, with Trenton that the money is still there as the money for the aeration project is still there. So as a matter of fact, in temporary budget, they even mentioned that the budget that was just approved by the uh, Senate assembly for the governor has preserved the, that money. Can I ask another question about that follow-up on Don? What happens if they retract the 50% and they say, sorry, we don't have it anymore. We can't give it to you. Basically, if uh, this is Rich speaking, basically, if they retract it, that means that the NJIET trust fund, something went wrong with it. Because the money is there. Um, we, we have uh, information that we are uh, going to get it, but they could always pull it. If it does, then we make a decision whether we pull the job or not. I mean, we told the uh, uh, people along the road that, you know, 50% of this is going to be forgiven. So that's what I'm sticking by. And uh, we're going to have to look at it. This ordinance that's on the books or on the uh, plan today uh, basically just speaks to earmarking, being able to go out to bond on this as we move forward. It is not saying we're spending it right now. It isn't saying anything like that. It's just saying that we can bond for it. And we got to make sure all the other ducks in a row. I mean, this has to go out to bid. This, you know, we're, we're still a little ways away. And one of the things, one of the women's, I forget her name, um, Leslie, maybe yeah. Ann, Kate, yeah. uh, asked about when this was going to get started. We really want to get this going as soon as we can. But obviously there were some delays with the other bond ordinance. And uh, if this passes tonight, we go to the next step and, uh, you know, and the next step and the next step. And hopefully, maybe sometime in the fall, we can get this moving and actually put a shovel in the ground. But uh, there's never a guarantee. Thanks, Rich. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> now we're at uh, approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of June 17, 2020. Uh, I'll move the minutes as written. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Robert. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. <laughs> Resolution 2020-95, approval of the bills list. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Does anyone need anything removed or discussed? Not hearing any, Mayor, I will move the bill list in its entirety. Second it. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. I'll entertain a, uh, a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move it. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. <laughs> These are Ordinance 16 2020. This is introduction. Auction of 334 Knox Way, block, block 40204, lot 37. An ordinance of the Burba Pacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the Burr and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 334 Knox Way, block 40204. Lot 37. I'd so like to move, move that ordinance 16 20, 20. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question. This introduces the ordinance for, okay, yes. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 17, 2020, auction of 15 Alexandria Avenue, 
Block 70109, Lot 9, an ordinance of the Borough of Apacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes and more commonly known as 15 Alexandria Avenue, Block 70109, Lot 9. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 18-2020, auction of 18 Bucknell Trail, block 30802, lot 9, in ordinance with Rural County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 18 Bucknell Trail, Block 30802, Lot 9. So, so move Ordinance 182020. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Sindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 192020, auction of 31 Adams Trail, block 40217, lot 4. An ordinance of the Borough of Apacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain properties owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 31 Adams Trail, block 40217, lot 4. So, so move, move ordinance 19 2020. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 20 2020. <laughs> Auction of 108 Madison Trail, block 40415, lot 27. An ordinance of the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of certain property owned by the borough and not required for public purposes, and more commonly known as 108 Madison Trail, Block 40415, Lot 27. So, so moved. Ordinance. Second. Call the roll, please. <clears throat> Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 21 2020, partially vacating Riggs Lane right away. An ordinance partially vacating Riggs Lane right away in the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Valerie, what are the final uh, hearings on this? What's the date? Um, the, we're, we're supposed to have a special meeting on the 15th. We usually don't have a second meeting in, Ju uh, in July, but we're uh, planning on doing that on the 15th to pay the bills and uh, adopt these ordinances. Okay, that would be July 15th. Correct. Okay. But Mayor, the auction would be the first meeting in August. The okay. auction for these would be the first meeting in August. Okay, first meeting of August, that's what it is. Well, the partial Riggs Lane we can do on the 15th, no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Riggs Lane will be on the 15th, July 15th. And the auction will be on August. What's the August. date in August? I think it's the 5th. August 6th? 5th. 5th, 5. Oh, August 5. Okay. Just so people are clear. These are our final hearings. Ordinance 13 2020, Hudson Sewer Service. Bond ordinance oh. providing for sanitary sewer improvements on Hudson Avenue in and by the borough of Pacon in the county of Sussex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $600,000. Therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $600,000 bonds or notes of the borough to finance the cost thereof and directing the special assessment of the cost thereof upon compliance with certain conditions. 
So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, I'll open this to the public for any questions or comments. Is there a... Heather, you're up. Heather Fear, Windsor Avenue. I still want to find out if there are vacant land, buildable vacant land that is listed in the lots that is required to do the connection just as there was with the original project. I know, I know second. one that has to be included. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Is there other lots that are buildable lots? Like there's multiple, there's a number that are owned by the borough of Patcong and there's others that own double lots. So they're not, they should not be included, but there, there might be one or two that ask to be included because they want to build. So you're saying that somebody who has vacant land, vacant buildable land, isn't included in this? Correct. But they, 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 they run the risk uh, if they don't want to be included in it. Uh, if they do it at a later date, the price does not go down because as the as the age of the sewers uh, mature, that cost goes up. Okay, so then the people that own vacant land now that have been paying for 16 years, they can just stop stop paying. They don't have to. If they no, this is them. not. This is not that project. This is the Hudson Avenue Sewer Service Project. Correct, which is still applicable to the same ordinance as we are. So that's what I'm asking. There's people that currently pay for vacant land. They were told they had to pay the quarterly fee. So if there are people that are paying for the quarterly fee for vacant land because they were told they have to, they can stop paying that now if they choose to and they're not planning on building. Oh. John? <laughs> yeah, look, you're, you're, you're asking about giving advice to other property owners around the town about whether they should be paying. I'm asking to, what the rules are. The rules are what's set what forth good in the for ordinance. Yeah, the rules That's are what's what set I'm forth. Asking. It's a simple question. It's yes or no. Well, it's not a, it's not a yes or no answer. The rules are what's set forth in the ordinance and people's decision about whether they continue to pay to preserve allocation is up to them. Okay. Are there any vacant lots on this ordinance? Who wrote the ordinance? Did anybody look at the ordinance? See if there were any vacant lots on the ordinance? The, the, the only vacant lots I know of are, are, are pavement. Are what? I know of two people that requested to be part of this. Well, on they vacant were vacant lots. lots that requested to be part of it, but there are no vacant lots. Okay. On I the have... list, no. No. It's essentially the list of the, the 38 or 40 people that voted on it. That should be about the list. <laughs> More hands, Ron? Um, nope, that's it. All right. I'll uh, entertain a motion to close it to public. So made. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. All right. Want to call the roll on the uh, motion and second? Was that just for closing to the public? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 14 2020 bond ordinance. Bond ordinance providing for various 2020 capital improvements by and in the borough of Pacon. <laughs> In the County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, the borough appropriating 
therefore, in authorizing the issuance of, of uh, $502,155 bonds or notes of the borough to finance part of the cost thereof. So moved. Second. Open to the public. Entertain a motion to close it to the public. Oh, oh, you got a question. Oh. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Do, do we know what the coupon or what the rate is um, on the bonds that are going to be issued? Lorraine? Uh, we're not going to be issuing bonds. This is just the authorization to issue. We don't have an intention of issuing bonds from this ordinance. It will be included in a note. Entertain a motion to close it to the public? Done. Okay. Uh, Raul, you want to call the roll on the ordinance? Okay, Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 15 2020, capital funding. Capital ordinance providing for various capital improvements and sewer improvements by and in the borough of Bacon in the county of Sussex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1,247,155, therefore $1,097,155 from the general capital fund and $150,000 from the sewer capital fund to pay for the cost thereof. So moved. Second. Second. Open to the public. I'd still ask what the $150,000 sewer extension is. Uh, Ron or, 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 or uh, Lorraine? It was hard, I think it was hard to hear the question. I said, I'm still asking what the $150,000 sewer item is that's referencing a sewer expansion. Sewer expansion, sewer expansion, I forgot what the exact word was. Improvements. Um, that's just the 2020 current year portion for our sewer budget. That would be up to council as to what they would want to do with that. It's just oh, that, providing the funding for it. Oh, okay, so that moves it from one to the other, that 150. Right, that's what was budget, budgeted in our 2020 regular budget and then moving it over to our capital budget. Okay. Thank you. More public? Move to bring it back. Second. Follow the roll to bring it back, uh, Valerie? Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Sindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Well, I'll recall the roll on the ordinance now, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Okay, that's it for the ordinances. Thank you for your patience. Resolution 2020-97, person-to-person liquor license transfer from Moa's Project LLC to Lola's Restaurant LLC. Mary, Ms. Uh, Mike, back one page. 96. 96 is the Planet Network uh, authorization. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I missed the page. I'm, li I'm missing the page. You read that for me, Valerie. Planet Network, um, let me... 2020-96. I'll do it. 2020-96, Planet Network authorization to install equipment in the right-of-way. 
There you go. I'll entertain a motion. I can't move it loud enough. Second. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes, happily yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. 2020-97, person-to-person liquor license transfer from Mullis Project, LLC, to Level is Restaurant, LLC. I'll make the motion. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. 2020-98, approval of the white collar contract. I'll move it. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. I'm abstaining because I don't have the exhibit that's needed for the, I'm not gonna vote on something I haven't seen all of, so I abstain. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. 2020-99, refund of sewer overpayment by Halliwell. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Uh, yeah. Ms. Roberts. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. 2020-100, liquor license renewal for West Shore Liquors. So move it. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. And new business, I want to bring up the late fees for sewer and water. And Lorraine, would you give us a, a scope of what you would recommend that we do uh, moving forward? Sure, the, uh, the governor's office released um, some new information yesterday, updated today, that gives the governing body the ability to um, waive the late fees and interest fees. Um, I would recommend that you keep your interest fees for del uh, delinquent payments, but um, advise you, if you could, to remove or waive the late fees. We are the only municipality um, the collector's office did some work and looked at uh, six other towns in Hopatcong, I'm sorry, in uh, Sussex County and 18 towns in Morris County. And we are the only town that has a late fee. We charge $10 for a late water payment and $25 for a late sewer payment. Um, so I would uh, respectfully ask that you consider waiving those late fees, but maintaining your delinquent interest. I'll entertain a motion if that's at the pleasure of the council. Uh, I'll move that to that effect. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Uh, John Erson, would you look into our ordinance and uh, Make an order, present an ordinance for the council that does not have the late fees in it, but only has the interest? Yes, ma'am. And uh, when that's ready, we'll present it to the council for review, introduction and review. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, Mayor on the, you skipped uh, over old business, and I just had a quick question. While uh, I see at least one person left in the audience, and I believe that's Amy Meyer, that uh, said that they lived on Crescent Cove, and I'm just curious, and there was also Phil Howard, if anyone knows him, uh, whether they had any uh, lakeside video coverage. Uh, if they do, yeah, they contact the Hopacon Police Department with that video coverage, if it covered the uh, accident site. That's all. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we talked about the weed harvester accident, and then we mentioned our five police officers. 
I was probably there right after they got there. When our five police officers got there, uh, they took their boots and guns off and they were in the water. Never seen anything like it. There was never a hesitation. There was no equivocation. They were in the water trying to save a person that they knew was in the water. There's a lot to be said for that kind of dedication. And you know, people criticize police. You hear all this rhetoric going on. But when the chips are down, I always say that we have the best the police department around and they just prove that. And they went in, they put themselves in harm's way when they did that. They might not have known it, but they did. And that night they were all going to a doctor and the next day, pretty much, and a couple of them to urgent care. We don't know what did it. <clears throat> I've asked for a water analysis and finally on Monday, I got a water and a water column analysis and a and a uh, a core analysis one to two foot deep to find out what in the world went on. I have asked Trenton for a report on uh, whatever uh, herbicide permits they've issued for the last 30 to 60 days. I haven't got it yet, but I have to tell you that this has not been the easiest and smoothest operation that I've seen. But I'm going to read you a letter I sent to Senator Rojo this morning with a picture of the boat that's still upside down with no lights on it at night, by the way. So I said, as you are aware, Senator, dear Senator Rojo, as you are aware, there was an accident involving a DEP weed harvester that capsized and took the life of the operator who was an employee of the DEP. The accident occurred on Wednesday, June 24th at approximately 10.30 a.m. As if today, July 1st, the capsized weed harvester is still in the same place. There are no marker lights on the site, so at nighttime, there's a very hazardous situation. The lack of diligence and poor management of this accident site by the DEP is unacceptable. If this vessel belonged to anyone else, there would be serious action taken to remediate the site. I would like to request a meeting with Commissioner McCabe to discuss this and future issues concerning Lake Apacon. I know that there is a long list of officials at the DEP, but I would prefer to meet with the commissioner so that nothing will be lost in translation when issues are discussed. Attach the picture of the Overton weed harvester as of June 30th, because that's the last time that picture I had. So I've been trying to work very hard with the DEP. It tries your patience to say the least. Uh, I bumped into a couple of their people, didn't have a pleasant conversation because they knew I was unhappy. But uh, if we do have the meeting, I will invite uh, anybody from Lake Foundation or, or Lake Commission that would like to go. I believe I'm obligated to do that on behalf of the borough and the person that lost his life. Uh, I take it very serious and I kind of take it personal. Uh, it's a very sad and tragic event I just won't want it to happen again. And so we'll have some lengthy conversations about this. I will keep you apprised of what I'm doing. It's no, no secret that I have a passion for our lake and I resent our lake being disrespected and not being managed properly. If you don't want to do it, just say so. I think we can put the people together that are willing to do it. But enough of this already. Uh, the aeration project uh, is moving forward. Uh, the compressor is on a truck on its way. Uh, we're getting the final footprint for it in the building. Uh, the, the pipes are in Pennsylvania on their way from Michigan. So hopefully within the next week, we can hook up the compressor and soon as the compressor and manifold are in place, it will only be a matter of uh, a week or less before the air aeration system is in Crescent Cove. And I'm really looking forward to that. That's very important to our lake and to our quality of life. Uh, the solar project, you saw the flyover. Uh, they're installing the collectors as, as we speak. I wasn't up there today, but I kind of go up there almost every day anyhow. Uh, so it, it's like I said before, it, it's, a, it's a critical project for our town. Uh, there is absolutely no risk as other towns and the county, by the way, uh, kind of got in a little bit of trouble because they gambled and they lost. It's a, it's a volatile bond market that I prefer not to play in. I'd rather collect rent. Um, 
I was notified today, and it, 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 was, it was the utmost sadness that I have to tell people that Estelle Klein passed away. Oh. It, it touches me to the core, because I remember Estelle, uh, before I was even involved in with counsel or anything else, Estelle had the heart to, to support me when I was fighting with the then, or arguing, I should say, with the then administration about Floria ratio and how they didn't want anybody in our town to do development or improve their property. They actually were preventative of that. So Estelle stepped up to the plate and really helped me. And it's probably her fault that I'm here to antagonize you like I do. But it, it, it hurts me to the core. And I, I loved her dearly and I will miss her dearly. Uh, with the COVID-19, please wear your masks. Please be careful. We're, we're taking a little step forward uh, we were the first uh, municipal building to open, but it's well organized, it's controlled, it, it still serves an essential need to the people, but not at the risk to the people. And sometimes we just have to protect ourselves from each other, unfortunately. So please wear your mask whenever possible. If you're outside, you know, and you're doing the social distancing, it's okay to wear your mask, even if you don't have to. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so, you know, uh, this has nothing to do with being politically correct or not. This has to be with maintaining the status that we have a pack on it's stabilized. We, we were at 127 confirmed cases for quite a while. I just noticed the other day we, we had 128, we had a new one. But there was one or two days when we were going up 10 or 15 cases and, and hopefully we don't visit that again. So please be careful, please. And, and tell anybody you know, just, just to be careful. You know, at our community center, or you go in the door with taking your temperature. I actually, actually looked at a, a, a device today where you walk through the door and take your temperature for Borough Hall, but we're not quite there yet. But we're getting to that point. I mean, uh, there's other states that are really, really bad. We have, I think, been careful enough to get this under control. I would prefer to keep it that way. So thank you for listening and thank you for coming. And that's all I have to say. I'll entertain a motion. So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done. Thank you very much.